práci. Dnes máme v britských listech Alanu Kumalu, která pochází ze Sri Lanky a proto budeme pokračovat v angličtině. Alana, welcome to the interview. Uh, you, as, I, as I've already mentioned in Czech, you come from Sri Lanka. Yes, that's right. And you are running a Global Concepts International mm-hmm. School in Prague. Yes. And my first question, therefore, is how does it happen that a person from Sri Lanka sets up an international school, a preschool international school in Prague, and runs it for how many years? Um, we are running for 25 years and we are the first uh, English-speaking preschool in the Czech Republic. Um, I came to Prague uh, a little bit after the communism, so it mm-hmm. was very different uh, a while ago. The school was actually founded by one Indian uh, friend of mine called Sunita Gandhi. And then she went on to work with the UN, but she had a vision to bring uh, English language for preschool students in the in the Czech Republic. So at the time when uh, uh, you set up and your colleague Ms. Gandhi set up the school, mm-hmm. uh, there were only a limited number of international schools, right? Um, there were two international schools in the Prague area, um, but we were the first school focusing on children aged two to six years, but there was also the American school and one more British school. Can you tell us over these years, uh, the student body has largely remained international or is it mostly Czech now or is it Mm -hmm. growing the Czech part of the student body or how would you evaluate it? Well, in the beginning of the school year, like the last 10-15 years back, we had mostly international students. Uh, or some Czech students of diplomatic families who lived abroad and who mm-hmm. had come back to the Czech Republic. Uh, but now I see a big change. There are more Czech people who can afford private school and they want their kids to learn English at a young age. And they also would like uh, the children to be integrated in an international environment uh, already at a young age. Do you yourself have any experience with Czech educational system? Uh, Our school is not part of the Czech Ministry of Education. We mostly follow the Montessori system. However, we like to teach the kids also about the country they live in. So we do teach them a little bit about the Czech system, like the Czech Mm -hmm. culture, but we are not part of the Czech system. Uh, I am familiar a little bit on how the Czech system runs. It's quite different. (laughs) Do you find it interesting that um Unlike, for example, other European countries, which have uh, state-funded or state-run mm. international schooling. For example, Holland, they have a lot of university programs mm-hmm. run not only in, in, in Dutch, but also in English, or sometimes only in English. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, for example, I know that in Slovenia, there is, a, there is a preschool, an international preschool, an elementary school that is state-funded, state-run, and it provides international schooling. And what I'm hinting at is that It seems that both of these countries, which I used as an example, are very much aware of the fact that uh, having their population on Dutch, or Slovenian or, or, or any other population for that matter, uh, fluent in another language, mm-hmm. international language such as English, is very beneficial for the society. Do you, do you find it strange that the Czech education system has never, as, as, as far, at least as far as I know, attempted mm-hmm. to set up a similar schooling? It is quite strange actually because most of the international schools are very expensive and they are not uh, accessible for the normal Czech uh, population which is quite a pity because uh, I come from a country uh, like Sri Lanka and then I'm familiar with the Asian system as Mm -hmm. well and uh, other countries usually do have a stronger English environment within their state school system. Mm -hmm. But I find the Czech school systems uh, lack that ability to integrate a lot of English in their program. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's a pity because it's important to learn from the young age uh, to learn English and any language for that matter. Children will learn faster if they hear it from a young age. So I, I don't know the reason why. Maybe it's it's about costs or maybe it's because they can't find enough teachers to teach uh, English in the schools or I am not sure why. 
Well, surely they, they can find enough teachers in countries such as Holland or Slovenia, which mm -hmm. are smaller in population mm -hmm. than the Czech Republic, or, or at least uh, um, a, a similar in size. Mm. And uh, I, I myself find it very rather uh, sad and, uh, mm. that, that they, the, the Czech government or the Czech Ministry of Education has never attempted to provide more of a international schooling to, mm. to, to, their, to its population. And uh, especially so when I, when I just um, look at uh, the Czech politicians who, such as for example the former Prime Minister Topolánek, mm who had his uh, son uh, educated at a, one of the, the, probably the largest international mm -hmm. school in Prague. And yet uh, it seems that not even his government or his governments ever uh, contemplated an idea like mm -hmm. that. And this is not only the case of the, of the uh, former Prime Minister Tupolanik, but I'm sure you, you could come up with other Czech politicians. Mm -hmm. Did, did you find any any kind of a similar uh, hypocrisy from your experience from, your, from Sri Lanka? For, in politics? Um, actually, even though our country is uh, regarded as a third world country, the education system is very strong in Sri Lanka and India. Uh, all students speak English when they leave the schools and all the higher education is done in English. Uh, it's true that we were colonized by the British, but we uh, took the good things out of the British and we left some of the bad things and I think the it's, it's a big change, like when you have kids learning in English in school, they can have, have better jobs, better opportunities, they can go into better universities. So I really think that it would be extremely beneficial if the education ministry in your country as well would integrate it better. I think that you have the resources and the European Union, which is like a very strong body that can help uh, help you integrate this system starting from the younger years and then continue forward. I think you, uh, the Czech citizens would be extremely happy and it will benefit a lot of people if, if, uh, if you find a way. Uh, this is very interesting what you're saying uh, because if you follow uh, the debates in, in, uh, about the Czech education system, you often encounter the argument that there there needs to be more stress on the traditional values and the Czech history and the Czech language. What would you say say to to these views? Um, Do you think that uh, in, in bringing up and educating uh, students and children in international environment mm -hmm. hinders their own background in any way? I don't think so because you can do the history part of it. You can teach children about history. Uh, in your own country and then that's the be most beautiful thing also about the Montessori principle. Mm -hmm. The children always learn about the country they are in and then they widen their ex uh, uh, experience and they widen their uh, knowledge on countries around them. So then they'll talk about Europe, then they can talk about other continents. So they're also learning a lot about uh, living with people around you and they are learning more to see wider horizons. And also I think what will be beneficial for your country is like if you have a good international system, you will find all these uh, uh, people who come from other countries like to work here or on expat jobs, they would not need to go to international schools, they can go to uh, Czech schools and it will be also beneficial for Czech kids that they learn to uh, learn about other children from different cultures and they can uh, integrate better in the world. I think it's, it's a great opportunity for the future. So I don't see any problem that they wouldn't learn about their, uh, they won't be patriotic anymore mm -hmm. or they won't uh, learn about your history. I think there is a way to integrate everything. and. Young children learn so fast. I think the more information you give them, the better when they are younger. Well, I personally totally agree with you. But what is interesting though, when you follow the Czech politics and the main uh, political parties, such as mm. the, the strongest party at the moment, the ruling party of the Prime Minister Babish, you'll encounter a lot of anti-immigrant talk, mm. a lot of talk that is in stark opposition to what you're saying. Something that a country of this size I find hard to believe that keeps voting for. <laughs> Want any comments on this? From what I've heard when I walk in the streets, I mean in Prague at least, you can't find anybody who really voted for me. <laughs> but uh, I guess in the rural areas, people still need to be educated as to 
um, what uh, the children can learn at a young age. And I think education is the key for every single uh, achievement. So I think if you start at a young age, like I said before, it could be easier. So I would like take uh, take uh, basically you need a big reform in mm -hmm. your educational system. And I think the only way to start is for people to take notice. And maybe if uh, if you come together as a community, maybe it will be easier to implement these things because um, I come from, like I said, uh, Sri Lanka, but mm -hmm. I'm also uh, partly Indian, so my roots are Indian. And in India, if people don't like something, they'd go onto the streets and they protest and you can ha have reform just from the power of people. Um, I find Czech people a little bit more laid back when it comes to these things. This is very interesting what, what you're saying, because I can imagine uh, that many, many Czechs would think of themselves as very democratic mm -hmm. and as very uh, advanced when, when compared, uh, as you said, to third world countries. Mm -hmm. But uh, now when listening to you, I gather that on the quite contrary, there's there's something there's there's a lot that they can learn from from the Indian educational system, and and it's very interesting that you've men mentioned the British rule mm -hmm. and how how the how the English schooling and British schooling um, actually inspired mm -hmm. uh, Indians and Indian educational system to 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 learn from mm -hmm. the from the British schooling, and how the two combined. Do you want to comment further on that? Well, for a long time we had only the, uh, in both uh, countries, we only had like, uh, you would study either in Sinhalese or only in Hindi mm -hmm. or in your native language. But then later as, as the economy grew, like India is one of the fastest growing economies mm -hmm. now in the world. And uh, they realized that it's important for the kids to learn English and for us to have a good educational uh, system, even in the higher level. So uh, it just changed. You give the kids, the parents, an option. They can study in English or in their native language. And in the beginning, we saw people a bit skeptical if the English system is good enough or if it's like, because it's a new system, people were a bit afraid. But now after it's been implemented for a couple of years, you find more even the rural areas in Sri Lanka and India that parents are choosing uh, the English rather than right. the Sinhalese or your system or the Hindi system and you have like bilingual schools, mm -hmm. a lot of bilingual schools or children can s study uh, and the best part is also like he over here the education is free mm -hmm. so and now you find lots of uh, Sri Lankans and Indians uh, they are the ones who are like running the biggest IT place, uh, right, IT right, yeah. And all those, uh, the, you find an Indian or Sri Lankan or an Asian in most right. of these high-ranking companies. So it's been really beneficial for us. Uh, my next question would be, um, <clears throat> if you look at the history of the, of the society, of the, of the Czech society, so not, not quite that long ago, before World War II, mm -hmm. this country was linguistically com com comprised of, uh, of uh, uh, several uh, language speakers. German, uh, Czech, of course, also Slovak, mm -hmm. Polish, Hungarian. Do you think that had this country been still comprised of more linguistic speakers, that this would have been beneficial? Um, I think it would have been a nice option to have that. I think the more languages you speak, mm -hmm. you, you are more uh, able to find better jobs and you can communicate better, you can understand the mentality of the people better. But the national language of the European Union, I guess, is English. So I think it would be nice to have uh, in English as the main uh, focus in general. And I think that a lot of your Czech schools, the children can choose between learning English or German, right? So... Uh, as far as I know, I, sometimes they also have the option of French, I think. So uh, maybe you have to develop better the second language or maybe have it bilingual. Right. Well, thank you very much. Our time is up. Děkujeme za pozornost. Na